Total, you know where to turn. Stage 8 for the Dakar 2009, and we leave the Pacific after a day of rest. We're going into the mountains. Jonas Street, the privateer in amongst the works bikes. He's fighting to defend his second place overall. Whilst on four wheels, the cars have a very, very hard day's driving through the rally-like stage. We've done seven stages of this year's all-new Dakar Rally. From Buenos Aires over the Andes to Valparaiso in Chile yesterday, where we had a rest day, giving people a chance to prepare for probably the harder of the two weeks. 67% of the field are still in the Dakar as we start this second week. David Costera, he says it's still going to be very hard. We've got big dunes like we have in Africa and a lot of desert from La Serena to Copiapo and on to Fiambala. Four different stages. This Dakar is not finished. We have still got some surprises. Now this is the Reconnaissance crew who went through the stages some three or four months ago and David Castera, former competitor himself, so he knows exactly what is needed for the stages on this year's event, having a bit of a exploration on two wheels. He says, over there, we've got to get the bikes through there. It's crazy. There's like this little canyon. It's magnificent. But where does he think the best part of the remaining kilometers will be. He says, for me, the best will be when we cross the Andes back into Argentina. That's what they call the Pass of Fran San Francisco. We'll go up to four and a half thousand meters height. Magic, there are so many things to see. Certainly some stunning views. Once the Dakar will literally scrape the top of the world, it'll be higher than Mont Blanc or even higher than Pikes Peak in Colorado. It may well be knocking on the door of the highest motorsport arena ever. Then we will drop back down into the lowlands of Argentina and the charge back towards Buenos Aires. Costera is saying the day before the finish we can still have some surprises even if the stage won't be so hard. The ground will be soft and towards the end of the stage it'll be quick. In Cordoba, it'll be a typical rally stage and all the fans will be waiting for us. Castera stressed to all before the event got underway that this second week would be far tougher than the first. It'll gonna, it's going to be a thrilling duel between Volkswagen to the finish. Stage eight, we leave Valparaiso on the shores of the Pacific and we go north towards La Serena, a special stage of some 294 kilometers. Gently back into it now, but the mountain roads could break cars or suspension. delay for the motorbikes to get off the stage start this morning. Uncharacteristically for a summer, there was fog down there. The helicopters couldn't take off and that was a safety reason, so they had an extra hour on the side of the road. But then the crowds finally got what they had come to see. The man, the man of Chile, Francisco Lopez. The flags were flying, the first proper stage of the Dakar ever in Chile. They were out with their cameras, they were out with their mobile phones and they were out with their flags, waving so proudly. Coming into this stage, Lopez just on the bubble of the top 10 in 10th position, but he sped through to come home in third position come the finish line. Just look at the crowds that were urging him on. 
Everywhere you turned, there was a red, white and blue flag. The fans were actually camping out overnight. It was just like the Col de Turini, as if we were on the Monte Carlo. But they were cheering for their man from Chile. He was shaking his head. He couldn't quite believe it at one of the refueling points. I'm happy to be here with all these people all the way down the stage. I'm, I'm having great fun and I just hope that everything will be okay up to La Serena. Lopez, with his speed today, has leapt from 10th to 7th in the overall standings. What a run he has had at home. If he can keep this kind of form up, he could easily be 5th in only a couple of days' time. Proper heroic stuff. But once the fog cleared, the heat once more continued to sear the competitors. Jonah Street, well, he ended stage seven a couple of days ago in second place, but he has been given a 15-minute penalty before today's stage, which, dro which dropped him to third. Still question marks over why he's actually got that penalty, but we believe it may have been because of an engine change. But then the man from Washington State with the privateer bike fell and he has injured his hand, re-injured his right wrist, and he has dropped a couple of places to fourth in the overall standings. But still, what a performance from Street. Sil Dupre, the reigning champion here on the Dakar, he may well have been an hour and a half behind Mark Comer back in 2007. And he's still an hour and a half behind him finishing this stage. He's now up to third position in the overall standings and it has completely changed the Frenchman's frame of mind. Better to be third than tenth overall. If Comer has a bad day and Dupre has a good day, you just never know. It was a stage of 2,000 corners, said Dupre come the finish line, and that it certainly was. Proper rallying stuff. Now here's the overall leader at the end of this day eight on the Dakar for 2009. Mark Comer continues to have another safe run. Other competitors believe he may well be running at about 80% of his maximum. That certainly seems to be the case for others. One thing that you don't want to do on this stage is go even half a metre offline. It's a big drop. It was more like Alpe d'Huez than a stage of the Dakar. Twists and turns all of the way. Alain Duclos finally getting into his rhythm after a bad start on the first week of this year's event. Jaclo now over the physical problems after a crash and it seems that the works KTM squad have got their tyres all sorted even though Jaclo lost his way momentarily. Jordi Viadoms on behalf of the Repsol KTM squad was close enough to back up Mark Coma today. And it was a good day for the Spanish, with Mark in second place on the stage. Jordi Viadoms, good run for him, the youngster in fifth position today. And he's up one position in the overall standings to sixth. Now then, what about this smaller 450cc capacity Yamaha of David Fretignier? Well, after Street's penalty of 15 minutes after that suspected engine change, Fretignier, unbelievably, up against all those 650, 660 KTMs, is up to second position in the overall standings. But Fretignier said he couldn't get into it today. He just wasn't in the groove, no confidence. And with drops like that, you certainly need confidence all of the way. He lost 10 minutes with a mistake. Meanwhile, uh, Gerard Fares, seventh on today's stage. And if you hadn't heard of him before this broadcast, that's because he was down in 47th position coming into this mountainous test. David Castello got awarded a works KTM rear wheel at one of the refueling stations. One of the uh, one of the uh, water carriers, as they term them, 
managed to repay back David Castello for his help that he has done for the Repsol boys. Pedrero Garcia, another one who you haven't heard of so far on this rally. He's 77th overall, but he got ninth on the stage today, just 20 minutes off the former World Cup champion and reigning Dakar champion, Sul de Pre. Palander's Oliver Seta rounded out the top 10 today, but he's gone up one in the overall standings. He's fifth. Prey being victorious once more, edging closer to Coma, who was second today. Lopez, good run, but third will do. De Clo and Viadoms. In the overall standings, Coma continues to lead ahead of Fretinier, Dupre. Street now fourth, Oliver Setter fifth. Dupre saying this year with Mark and Chaleco, we have shared the wins, but today I started ahead and everybody was attacking. You needed to ride well because it was slippery and to control the bike it was hard. It's very physical, very technical all at the same time, but it's a good new day to make it three good days for me. Mark Comer, who was second today, saying it was a hard stage, slippery, very slippery indeed with the surface. We really had to take care through the corners, and particularly while on the brakes. Very complicated. But I managed to get through this stage today, so, so that's good. We can now attack the Atacama Desert. That'll be the hardest part. Alain Duclo saying, I didn't go well on the first part of this rally because I was hurting. Plus, I had tyre problems. But now it's fixed and I'm now ready for part two, which will be the hardest part. If Cyril wins and I'm fourth, well, it's good. We're here in La Serena. We've had some wacky races in the 30-year history of the Dakar Rally. We've had a Jaguar XJ6, we've had a six-wheel drive Mercedes, we've had a Renault 5, and we've even had, unbelievably, a Rolls-Royce. But maybe we've got a new wacky car. This guy says, this is a clue. We've got a Frenchman, we've got a Belgian. And the Frenchman's from northern France, so he says, well, at the beginning, the other cars thought that we were really crazy, and it's true that on each rally there are some crazy cars. But at the start, everyone was saying that we would last maybe about three stages. But the days are going well, we're here, and we're winning some credibility. And the reason that they're winning some credibility is that the back end of this truck is actually a little kitchen. And whilst one of the guys is mending the front suspension, another one is actually cooking up some French fries. He says, well, for a Belgian like me, it's always good to see a frit and make me smile. Now, on the normal roads, they take it pretty easily with their Toyota, but surely it gets a little harder once they get in the dunes. He says, in, a, in the dunes, it's actually quite hard. We occasionally crest the top of some dunes and we really only fly a few centimetres. It's, it's a bit pathetic. But then we think that at times it's, it's a really rubbish car, but actually we quite like it. They are unbelievably 65th at the moment. And by the way, do you want ketchup with that, or do you want mayonnaise? The start of today's stage on four wheels. Just before 10 o'clock, the preparations for American Mark Miller inside his works of Volkswagen, and likewise inside the works, and now lone Mitsubishi for Nanny Roma. Into gear, countdown, and zero. Nanny Roma leaves the line. Mark Miller, Baja specialist, leaves the line. Look at the crowds. Unending spectators in this part of the world. And immediately, they're into the rigorous run. 
Nani Roma coming into this stage in fourth position overall. And ironically, coming out of it. Fourth on the stage, fourth overall. The lone Mitsubishi now has something like 70 personnel backing it up, whilst all four works Volkswagens are going hell for leather. Very close indeed at the top of the order. The top three, Sainz, De Villiers and Miller coming into this stage, covered by less than 14 minutes. You never know if Sainz or De Villiers has a problem, then the Dakar Trophy for the first position could be going stateside with Mark Miller. Put your bets on, you just never know. Miller safely through the stage. Pretty well even Stevens between the works Volkswagens and Miller continuing in third this evening. Now we are in La Serena, but he has lost another five minutes overall. Dieter Depping, he's almost got nothing to lose after losing two hours in the first week with separate problems, once with the turbo, once with electrics. But Depping has managed to keep his pace high and he has gone up one place eight in the overall standings. I repeat, all four works Volkswagens continue in this rally, and it's the overall leader, Carlos Sainz, who is continuing to lead this rally overall, not by nine seconds as he was at the beginning of the day, but by nearly 11 minutes. This was certainly a rally driver's stage, and Sainz with two World Rally Championships under his belt, and 26 World Rally Championship wins, the man who first did a rally back in 1988 in the World Championship has certainly got an enormous amount of experience and it showed today. What about De Villiers? Well, he stays in second position in the overall standings and he had his eyes made wide open at times. He may have lost three of his five gears on the way into Valparaiso, but today he had a puncture whilst following Gerlan Shisharit. Here is Shisharit. Shisharit sixth on the stage in one of the BMW X3s, but the flying Frenchman is still struggling in the overall standings after receiving an enormous time penalty before the rest day. Still ruining the fact is Shisharit that he overcooked it on the very first stage, upholding BMW's honour nonetheless. Now then, all of the top cars have been diesel. Diesel is the way to go in 21st century rally raiding. But if you want sound, just listen to Krzysztof Holovich. Glorious, nothing like an open pipe on a big three litre V6. Krzysztof Holovich, the man from Poland in sixth position. Robbie Gordon, he lost time at the beginning of the stage. He got caught on a rock, but he's still continuing to be the leading two-wheel drive in his Hummer. Now, how do you get around a rock such as that? Always a bit of a clue when there are lots of spectators on a stage. Usually means they're gonna get some fun, and it usually means that people are gonna get stuck. Robbie Gordon holds his fifth position in the overall standings, but he's an hour behind the car in front of him, the works Mitsubishi of Nani Roma. Now here is Eric Vigarou, the man who got the last minute call up to join Robbie Gordon's team just before Christmas to pack his bags and jump on a plane, come down south from where he now lives in California to Buenos Aires, but he had some more fundamental problems today. The sister Hummer to that of Robbie Gordon. He said, I've no longer got neutral or first gear. We started the stage with a clutch problem, but we didn't have time to fix it. I was frightened to stop the engine through some of the tight hairpin corners, but when it was difficult to see through the dust, I just had to stop. Indeed, he had to stop. It was impossible to restart. Good run from the Norwegian Ivan Tollefsen in the South African-built Nissan. Tollefsen seventh overall, whilst massive problems for Victor 
Volikov, the Russian, who had nearly gone all over the edge, but he managed to find a helping hand through Spaniard Jose Maria Garof in his bowler. And soon the Spaniard pulling out the Russian and the pair of them can continue on their way. Sainz victorious on the stage, pulling out a little bit more time ahead of the others. Depping having a good run to go second. Miller in touch with third, Roma and de Villiers. Overall, Sainz extended his lead from nine seconds to nearly 11 minutes. It uh, was very good, the car was very well and also the stage was good for me, but uh, sometimes very, very uh, slippery and uh, very narrow and I took many cars. So uh, the day was good for me and also for the car. That's not really my kind of stage, but uh, I just did what, everything that I could just to maybe not lose too much time to Carlos. It looks like we lost about four minutes, which I'm pretty happy with because that was full on WRC rally and that's not my game. So uh, the fact that I didn't lose eight minutes is fantastic for me. And we didn't put a wheel off. Everything like was completely mellow all day as far as the uh, car. So uh, I feel good that we got through that stage. Danny Roma saying I had a puncture again and even if I lost two or three minutes the most important part is to be here. The car's going well, it's going better actually and we'll be here every day. If Volkswagen want to win then they will have to fight, fight, fight because even if we are the last car left in the team Mitsubishi will never give up. In the world, there are 200 million people living on less than one dollar a day. And the charity Uno Tecna Para Mi Pais is aimed at building small, easily constructed houses in an attempt to fight poverty. It literally means a roof for my country. The association has helped 40,000 families in South America. And Nicolas Morales saying, we're here, we're building some houses. First, we put the stilts in the floor. The houses are made of six very simple panels. We then finish the roof. And in this particular region, we're building 75 houses before the end of this week. With the help of 100 volunteers, we hope that we can finish that. The association started in Chile back in 1997, and they are represented in 14 countries throughout Latin America, from Mexico down south to Argentina. The president of Chile was involved yesterday during the rest day in Valparaiso, and so was the overall rally leader, Carlos Sainz. Danny Roma saying we must remind ourselves that we had the chance to be born into a house with a roof. What these young people are doing is great because they're getting involved to do it themselves. The fact that they help themselves is brilliant and we must congratulate them. The priority of the association is to help the family and the Dakar's presence is helping many who are less fortunate than ourselves. trucks had had their rest day, the trucks had somehow serviced over 12 tonnes of sheer brute force. On the winding road, you need to be sure if you're co-driver, you do not want to go over the edge. And Gerard de Roy just double checking some notes with his co-driver on his right hand side. De Roy, third in the overall standings, only 17 minutes back of the overall lead, but he's battling against the mites of the Russian Kamaz squad. Kamaz and Tatra being victorious on the Dakar since 1997, and it's all down to De Roy if he's going to try and tip them off the podium. Alice Laprace, the nephew of Carol Laprace, he was third on today's stage, holding up the family honour. Alice always being involved in the Dakar with his uncle, Carol, and the man from the Czech Republic, 
flying the family flag and also the flag for the Czech Republic based Tatra squad. But it's Kabirov who continues to lead the rally with the trucks ahead of Vladimir Chigin. It's close stuff as we enter the second week of this year's event. Quick shout though for the all Japanese Hino, Sugawara fourth overall. Tomorrow's stage, we move north from La Serena through the 449 kilometer stage into the Atacama Desert for the very first time. It is known as the most arid desert in the world. It's going to be tough. Join us for more tomorrow.